Welcome to Adapting Class and thank you for joining the channel. I have two questions to illustrate certain facts about GI uh, um, pathologies, basically GI questions that sometimes they may ask you and you got to pay attention to details uh, to be able to answer the question. So let's take a look at it. And before that, uh, you can join us uh, every Saturday at 3 to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And this is the um, ID and passcode for the Zoom. So I would be looking forward to see you. Um, so this is the question. Um, it's a similar question. I changed a couple of things, uh, but it, it, it follow the same information. Um, this is a SATA question. Uh, just to illustrate, teach my subscribers and those who are joining us, um, certain things, sometimes they will throw certain things in to confuse you. So this is a set of question. You know how we do our set of question. Um, we read the last portion. So this is a set of question, which assessment. So this is an assessment that is being asked. Findings the nurse should anticipate. Then you read the case. A client with end stage cirrhosis was admitted for uh, worsening symptoms. Patient was transferred to ICU for concern of what? Encephalopathy. Like I say, it's the same line, uh, um, basically taking certain facts to answer the same questions. Um, which assessment finding the nurse should anticipate? So, like I said, it was a similar question that we saw during the review, and I, I just want to emphasize for um, people who were there to look at this question carefully in case you see. So you, the, 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 the act is assessment. You're looking for an assessment finding. Okay. And then what is the case? A patient has end-stage liver disease, okay, cirrhosis, and was admitted for worsening symptoms. Patient was presumptively diagnosed with uh, encephalopathy, okay? Which assessment finding the nurse should anticipate? So that's, those are the case. So you have a patient cirrhosis and cephalopathy assessment. And the buzzwords, this is where you have to pay attention. The patient has cirrhosis, fine. It was admitted for worsening symptoms, but what? The patient was transferred to the ICU with concern of encephalopathy. So the main buzzword is encephalopathy, which assessment findings, so assessment. So all they're asking you is what? An assessment finding consistent with encephalopathy. It has nothing to do with end-stage cirrhosis. It doesn't matter whether it is Westerner symptoms or ICU, it doesn't matter. All was you're supposed to focus on patient was transferred to the ICU because of worsening or concern for encephalopathy. So what assessment finding is consistent with this? So you see the buzzwords are only two words. An assessment finding consistent with encephalopathy. And then your rewrite is the same thing. What assessment finding is consistent with encephalopathy? And before you go, you come up with your bag of content. And you say, what is encephalopathy? It's due to pay, uh, increase in ammonia because the liver cannot detoxify ammonia anymore. And it, it affects the brain. So the brain function is de deteriorating. So the patient can get confused. They can go into coma. They have slur speech, okay? And they have a classic symptoms that we, when they stretch their hand, they are flapping tremor, which is asteresis. So flapping tremor when they stretch their hand. This is all you see when you, you have a patient with a, um, encephalopathy. They may be serotic, but they may not have encephalopathy. So there's a difference if you have you have if you, you have cirrhosis, you may develop encephalopathy, but not every patient who have cirrhosis has encephalopathy. Therefore, 
They may have features of encephalopathy or they may have features of cirrhosis or they may not have features of encephalopathy. That is what the question is asking you. I'm looking for features of encephalopathy, not cirrhosis. So what do you do? Now you take a bag of content and take it with you. Yellowish coloration under the tongue. So that means the patient has joined this under the tongue. This is the place where you can find joint this another place, either the eyes, the skin, or the under the tongue. But this is consistent with what cirrhosis, end stage liver disease, you get joint this. It's not consistent with encephalopathy. Therefore, this is wrong. Rectal varices. Yes, if you have cirrhosis, you develop portal hypertension. That means the, the, the liver is so fibrous that the portal system cannot retain blood to their heart. And so they develop what? Portal hypertension. When you have portal hypertension, blood will find some way to go back to the heart. So in the rectum, the, the vessels there get bigger, and that is where the route, one of the um, route the blood will go to the circulatory system. Therefore, they have what? Rectal varices. But this is not consistent with encephalopathy. It is consistent with end-stage liver disease. Therefore, this is wrong. Petechia, the same thing. When you have portal hypertension, the spleen get bigger, okay? And it's plain suck oil of your platelet. So your platelet go down. And when the platelet go down, they get petechia. This is consistent with the cirrhosis leading to portal hypertension, not encephalopathy. Therefore, this is wrong. Slay speech, yes, the brain. Our answer. Abdominal fluid wave. Once again. You have abdominal fluid wave. This is ascites. Ascites has nothing to do with encephalopathy. Therefore, it's consistent with cirrhosis, but it's not answering the question. So this is gone. Last one, confusion. Brain function is affected. So the right answer is four and, and six. And like I said, this is just for illustration to show you guys that you got to pay attention to the question. What the question is asking, there will be distractors, but you got to stay focused. Okay. So I have the similar one. I change it a little bit. The same thing just to give you guys some solid content. So the same thing. Which assessment finding the NEN should anticipate? The same thing. What assessment finding you should anticipate? What is the uh, case? A client with end stage cirrhosis was admitted for what? Now with upper GI bleed, is bleeding. Okay, from the mouth. Patient was transferred to the ICU with diagnosis of what? Portal hypertension. Now we have portal hypertension. Which assessment finding the NEN should anticipate? It's the same thing as the other question, but the focus should be on what? Portal hypertension. I know the patient has cirrhosis, but that is not my problem. The question is asking you, if I'm being admitted for portal hypertension because I'm bleeding, then what do you have to say? I know I have cirrhosis that has led to portal hypertension, but what are the symptoms that is consistent with portal hypertension? You can have cirrhosis and may not have portal hypertension, the same thing. So portal hypertension means if this is the liver, okay, your portal vein, it drain everything from the gut. So this is the GI tract, simple way. Okay, it drain all the blood and the spleen is here like that. It send all the blood to the liver. So this is the portal vein and the liver send it to the heart. So if the liver is obstructed from fibrosis, this blood pressure will increase in the portal vein. That's what it means. Portal hypertension. Blood cannot go to the heart, to the liver. So you find some way, you go through certain veins, small, small veins on your skin, 
in the rectum, you get esophageal varices. It go to the spleen, the spleen get bigger, the spleen suck all your platelets. So your platelet goes down. So that is what happened. And so we're going to use that content to answer the question. Rectal varices, yeah. That's consistent with portal hypertension. Spleen is bigger because there's more blood go there. Yes. Petechia, because spleen take all the platelets, so thrombocytopenia. Caputo medusa, this is your umbilicals. The vessels there usually is arbitrated. That means you don't need it. But when you have portal hypertension, it opens up. So you have big veins in the um, umbilicus. And so this is consistent with portal hypertension. And large internal hemorrhage. Yes, in the rectum, they're trying to make their way to the rest of the circulatory system. So they get bigger. And confusion. There's nothing here that tells you there's confusion. Confusion is related to ammonia. And ammonia elevated would lead to encephalopathy. So just stay with the question that they asking you. Portal hypertension. These are the symptoms consistent with portal hypertension. And therefore this. So this is what we did in, during the review. Just to want to emphasize certain things that you got to pay attention and answer the question. Once again, thank you for joining us. And um, I hope you learned something from these two questions. Um, this is very good questions. Um, take care of yourself. Keep charging. And see you later at the review. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.